What does it take to reimagine metabolic health by harnessing the power of sport and technology? According to our next guest, Phil Sutherland, founder and CEO of Super Sapiens, it starts with audaciously believing that real-time biometric data can revolutionize well-being for all. Drawing from his lifelong journey managing type 1 diabetes through exercise, Phil shares Super Sapiens' mission to make continuous glucose monitoring accessible worldwide. Their cutting-edge ecosystem inspires better nutritional choices by visualizing individualized glucose responses, whether you're a pro athlete or everyday parent. While together, Phil reveals how Super Sapiens is tackling insurance obstacles to customize care, why helping youth build healthy habits is imperative, and the pivotal role entrepreneurs play in shaping preventative healthcare policy. Join us to hear Phil's vision using sports and technology to unlock the power of glucose that can fuel our amazing human potential. Let's go. Welcome to Passionate Pioneers with Mike Baselli, where we highlight and speak with the innovators, the game changers, and the pioneers who are deeply passionate and relentless in solving the problems our world is facing today. This is your opportunity to connect with and learn from these leaders and to support them on their mission. Perhaps they will soon be hearing your story as well. This is Passionate Pioneers with Mike Baselli. I look forward to having you on this journey with us. Hi, Phil. A big welcome to our podcast today. Mike, good to be here with you. Well, as someone living with type 1 diabetes your entire life, coupled with the groundbreaking achievements in diabetes management at your company and your deep commitment to improving healthcare outcomes through technology, I'm fired up for this conversation today. But before we dive in, a bit of housekeeping. While listening to any of our episodes, please take a moment to subscribe to the podcast so you will automatically receive episode updates in your podcast player. Simply search Passionate Pioneers with Mike Baselli and Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. And lastly, please visit the bottom of the episode notes to connect with me on LinkedIn and Twitter in order to further the conversations occurring on this podcast. All right, Phil, it's almost time for our community to learn how you and the Super Sapiens team are building an industry-leading wellness tech company that uses sport and activity as a platform to inspire and engage consumers on their metabolic health journey. But first, What's that one piece of advice that you would give to others who are passionate about reimagining the health of our world? Tough to break that one down on just a single piece of advice, but I think for the pioneers out there, it's the more you hear that this can't be done, probably the better idea it actually is. And when you know and you believe in your heart that this needs to happen, then just don't quit. You know, every no is one step closer to a yes. Every challenge you get is someone projecting their own self-doubt and their ability to pull it off. If you believe and you have the perseverance, the drive to push, then just don't give up and strive to make a difference in the world. And, you know, karma is circular. The world will come make a difference for you. Oh, man, I feel I love it. We're going to be teed up for a hell of a conversation today. I absolutely love that advice. You know, I've been fortunate. I've been surrounded by some amazing mentors and advisors throughout my journey. And it's that notion of thinking audaciously, right? We're talking about an industry that touches every single person on this planet, health, wellness, and health care. We have to think audaciously. As you know, as well as I do, Phil, healthcare is by far the largest industry in regards to GDP in our country and still growing. It is not sustainable. We have to think different. We have to think audaciously. I love that you brought that up. And then also <laughs> as well, I always believe that whenever I hear no in uh, business dealings, I just call it a delayed yes. But we'll put that one aside for now. I want to come back to thinking audaciously, thinking big. Is this part of the culture that you're setting inside of your organization as well? Not just for you personally, but is that what you're setting in, up in the culture of Super Sapiens as well? And how important is that as you continue with your journey with the organization? Yes, we are pioneers. Everyone in my company who's introducing this new language of glucose as a proxy for metabolic health and well-being and using sport as a platform, I mean, we are doing something that's never been done before. And then to think audaciously, yeah, it's, look, I believe... You know, every human is an athlete, right? I mean, Nike said that, so I'm just borrowing. Or do you have a body? Then you're an athlete, right? And so I'm here to serve athletes. I'm here to serve every person with a body. And if we can get them moving, right, inspire people to be active, and then through the Super Sapiens app, the data analytics validate, you know, the impact of activity and exercise. That can be walking, that can be running a marathon, anything in between, but validate the effect of that movement on your metabolic health, then people are going to be more active more often. And to think that you know, just getting people to move means there's, what, 7 billion people 
in the world that could benefit from being touched by super sapiens. And then you look at, you know, in the U.S. population where there's 300 million people today, 100 million have diabetes or prediabetes. One in five kids is already on the route to diabetes. You know, we have to act, right? The time is now. And, you know, between the technology that we were able to leverage based on Abbott's great invention and the work they've done to bring this to market, and then our data analytics, most importantly, just the inspiration that we bring as, you know, who we are at Super Sapiens, it's time to seize the moment. And I think we're all excited for the potential impact. But, you know, as you know, as a big idea, you know, there's a lot that has to get done before idea comes to execution. Oh, I love it. Absolutely. Those are big numbers. That's some audacious goals. I love how you're thinking as a CEO and founder. We're going to discuss all of that and what's happening in the Super Sapiens camp. We have a lot to uncover and unpack and share with the community. We're going to get after it after we get back from thanking our community champion sponsor. Healthcare faces a paradox that echoes through generations. While the current practices that help heal patients today are vital, it is crucial to evaluate them through an environmental lens. OSHA's Responsible for Tomorrow initiative is a collection of interviews featuring influential thought leaders and industry experts like you who share their sustainability strategies, insights, and provide valuable perspectives from diverse industries to inspire innovation within the healthcare sector. OSHA invites you to join this journey. Want to share your sustainability story? OSER is actively looking for partners to highlight the important and inspiring work being done around the globe. Check out OSER's Responsible for Tomorrow initiative and series at OSER.com. That's O-S-S-U-R.com. Or visit the episode notes and click on their link. Together and with OSER helping lead the way, let's all be responsible for tomorrow. All right, we are back with Phil Sutherland, founder and CEO of Super Sapiens. Phil, thank you so much. You teed us up on the front end for a hell of a conversation today. Got to think audacious. Got to think big. You and the team are doing exactly that. Cannot wait to have the story told on this episode. Been waiting for a while now to have this conversation with you. Phil, we're going to discuss how this all came to be in the first place. Love the aha moments, the whys, how it came to be. Where did the stars line up for a company like this to get going? Almost now five years in the making, you've been at it. You know as well as I do, any startup just to get past year two is a hell of a feat. You guys are now almost five years and strong. Lots to discuss there. Also then want to kind of think about future state. Where are things heading? What are you and the team seeing? What should we as a community rallied around this podcast need to be thinking about given your expertise and what you're seeing out in the marketplace? And of course, how our community can be helping you and the Super Sapiens team. But for now, Phil, take us behind the scenes and take us behind the curtain a bit. How did it all come to be in the first place? How did this amazing company, this high growth company, Super Sapiens, how did it all come to be in the first place? Thanks, Mike. I love your enthusiasm. I can see why you've been a successful pioneer time and time again in this sector because it takes unbridled enthusiasm to be audacious. And like ours, it's a bit of a winding journey. I mean, you can go back 41 years, I was diagnosed with diabetes, right? My, I was told based on current standards of care, treatment, and technology that I'd be dead by 25. That's what my parents were told us. I was seven months old and lost 10 pounds in two days. And I've been fortunate to always have access to medicine. You know, test strips, I fought my insurance companies to get enough test strips to check 20 times a day as a kid. So I was, you know, our, kind of creating a continuous glucose monitoring system, you know, in advance of the technology by checking so frequently throughout the daytime, you know, doing seven to 10 injections per day, to manage my diabetes, prevent long-term complications, but also to be a good athlete, right? I knew if I had good control of my glucose, if I optimize it, that I could compete against the best athletes in the world. And I did that as a junior, as a U23. And then in 2005, I got put on a trial with the thing called the Freestyle Navigator, which was Abbott's first continuous glucose monitoring device. And 20 days of seeing the data and the trends and what was happening, I learned more in 20 days than I had in 23 years of obsessing and perfecting glucose control. And we had this audacious idea to take an all type one diabetic team and race our bikes across America to prove that with good control, you know, you can achieve any dream out there. And when I used this technology, I said to my doctor, Bruce Bodie, he's had his fingers on the pulse of any new drug treatment technology in, in this space for the last, you know, four decades. I said, Bruce, if we're gonna do this and you know, not die in the middle of the country, I have to have this technology and I need a sponsor. So Bruce introduced me to Abbott Labs and I met Holly Culp, Steve Bubrick, Kurt Genuine, Mirsel Pinanello, January 25th, 2006. Gave him a big pitch. I was 23, looked like I was 16. Walking into a big med tech for the first time in my life. 
And, you know, that night over a glass of wine, Holly Culp committed to the budget and my team doing this race. So we did it. We got across the country five days, 16 hours and four minutes. Something that if the people on the start line, anyone who I said, we're going to do this, and you're absolutely crazy. There's no way in hell an all diabetic team can ride their bikes across the country. I said, we're not just going to ride, we're going to win. Right. And I was wrong. You know, we lost the race the first year by three minutes, three minutes to a team of professional bike racers. But we came back with the knowledge of where our glucose needed to be. We, I had sponsorship from Abbott, from Santa Fe, from Insulet Corporation, uh, Amelin, you know, specialized bikes, a whole host of people. We knew where our glucose needed to be that second year. And the second year, we led the race start to finish, set a world record at 25, supposed to be dead or blind. You know, we'd proven to people with diabetes was possible. So, yada, yada, yada. Let me fast forward. Got my team in a professional Peloton, started testing continuous glucose monitoring on people without diabetes in 2008. And we were seeing numbers, you know, in people without diabetes that the textbook said, this is what happens. Athletes without diabetes are going to have glucose between 90 and 100. But we were seeing glucose of 150, 200, 250 in healthy individuals. But the technology must have been flawed because the textbooks say that's not what happens. Then we did clinical trials in 2011, you know, testing 34 athletes half with, half without diabetes over three weeks of racing. And again, saw a lot of things that like during sport, everyone's a diabetic. And I actually founded the company to get glucose to the bike computer in 2009, but the technology didn't exist. And industry said, you know, Phil, there's no need for glucose outside of people with diabetes. And I said, okay, well, give me glucose to the bike computer for people with diabetes. Nah, it's too much of a niche market. Ultimately, that idea rested for a little bit of time. I created Team Nova Nordisk, an all diabetic pro cycling team, racing to inspire, educate, and empower people affected by diabetes. Really good job using continuous glucose monitoring to manage and it's the greatest source of hope and inspiration for the diabetes community worldwide. Great partnership with Nova Nordisk, who's you know, Europe's most valuable company now. They're doing just phenomenally as they've expanded outside of diabetes. But we were missing glucose on the bike computer. And Chip Hawkins, the founder of Wahoo Fitness, hacked it for me. And it's actually, you know, you say almost five years. It was December 12th, 2018, when I first got glucose on my bike computer. And in two weeks, I learned more about optimizing nutrition for performance then in the past, you know, 38 years of being an athlete and 15 years of being an athlete with a continuous monitor in my pocket, I said, this is the best invention I've ever had. I got to bring it to market. And Abbott had given a massive grant to my foundation. I've been working on access to medicine in Rwanda for the past 13 years now. They committed to four years of testing supplies for Rwanda. So I came with a thank you plaque to say, this is great. I came with a pitch deck for Team Nova Nordis to say, I'd love to have you as a partner. And I said, I showed my bike computer with glucose on it, and I said, I want to bring this to the non-diabetic market, use sport as a platform to bring continuous glucose monitoring to the world, because I think this is the most important disease prevention tool in the history of mankind. Could we work together? And I had a name, Super Sapiens, no business plan, no employees, and I'd invested 30 grand in the company at that point to hire a branding kid. One month later, we got it approved by the CEO to go, and I put half a million dollars into the company to start hiring people and building the technology. And you know, that's how Super Sapiens came to launch. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. If that doesn't get you fired up, I don't know what will. Phil, what a great way to set the stage to talk about what you and the team are accomplishing and, of course, where things are heading as well that we need to be mindful of listening in. Well, let's first start there, Phil. Hit us with that elevator pitch. Who is Super Sapiens? Super Sapiens is a company that you know, helps you to be the best of you, right? And you know, the mission for us is really using insights and analytics on our app based off of continuous glucose monitoring to help you achieve your goals in sport and metabolic health. So ultimately, we use continuous glucose monitoring. It's a phenomenal tool. You know, if you look at the life expectancy of when I was diagnosed with diabetes, you know, it was 25 years. But based on the improvements in drugs, treatment, and technology, what do those equate to? Those equate to better metabolic health. And because of that, that same kid who was diagnosed at seven months old today would be told, you have a normal life expectancy. Right. And that's because people with diabetes went from a mass variability to much tighter variability. And so what makes it easier to have better glucose control is more exercise. I've been quantifying this for the last 35 years on, you know, N equals one, have then done it in mass on, you know, many, many, many people. And now we've seen it in, you know, 30 some odd thousand consumers in Europe. The days that our consumers exercise, they have better glucose control. They have better glucose stability. So validating the importance of exercise so that people can do it, you know, prioritize it more greatly in their lives and hopefully have better metabolic health and hopefully have longer and healthier, happier lives because of it. So with that said, the U.S. market's critically important. 
And the technology, the app that I built using Abbott's LibreSense technology is really, if you look at continuous glucose monitoring, it's the first class cabin of this airplane. And you know, the technology that exists on market is great. It keeps you safely, it gives you a number, it gives you a trend, but it doesn't contextualize the glucose very well. Our app, not being a medical app, being a secondary display when we come to the States, means we can be very creative in what the consumer needs, not just to see their glucose and act on it, but to contextualize what's happened in the past so that you can drive for better glucose outcomes. So we're launching Super Savings Diabetes here in America to bring the app that's been built for you know, athletes, built for people who had no idea what glucose was and why they should use it. Now they're using it to you know, break world records in marathons, Ironman, win the Tour de France, which we've done the past two years. We're in Formula One and professional golf, NBA, La Liga, football clubs. We're bringing that super phenomenal service back to the diabetes population where 3 million, I guess 5 million people today are currently using continuous glucose monitoring. And we're going to help all of them just get a better experience and you know, allow them to go exercise more safely and drive improved glucose outcomes. It's something, you know, I finally get to come back to my community, which is something I am super proud of and all of us here at Super Sapiens really are too. So how about that user that would say, Phil, I'm not a pro bowl you know, tight end. I'm not a, a world-class cycler like you. I don't know how to shoot a basketball to save my life. I'm just an everyday Mike. I'm just an everyday Joe Blow. How does this apply to me, Phil? I think there's one, you know, a quality what we all have is we're all in the sport of life, right? And I don't think anyone sitting here today listening says, I want to die sooner, right? The majority of us want to live as long as possible. And improving your glucose control, it's not going to prevent everything, but it's definitely going to, to help you have a longer, healthier, happier life. So in the sport of life, you know, we have a very important tool and we want to help you win in that game. And knowing that if you improve your glucose control, you're going to be a better mother. You're going to be a better father. You're going to be better at just about anything you want to do because glucose control, yeah, people with diabetes know this. If you're out of control, you're not the best of you. And, you know, we help you get into control, stay in range and be the best version of yourself, no matter what your goals in life are. And obviously you mentioned, you know, coming to the States, a huge opportunity here throughout America, of course, but if, you know, you have been OUS. Phil, at the end of the day, we as entrepreneurs, we as founders of companies, we can think that our baby, our technology, our company is the best thing ever, but that frankly doesn't matter. Let's be honest. It's the feedback from the end users that matters the most. You know it, I know it. That is where the opportunity lies. How has the feedback been thus far from those end users? Well, I mean, Mike, it's it made me laugh on the inside here and in that, yeah, when we were building the forecast for the initial go to market and how great this product was going to sell in year one, because it's the best thing ever. We messed up. We thought we could bring continuous glucose monitoring to the non-diabetic world and that they were just going to understand it, boom, pick off and go. And it was a massive oversight, right? What we should have done in hindsight is work with the coaches, work with the nutritionists and help educate them on how to use the technology so they could help their consumers you know, achieve their goals more effectively. And so we made some big mistakes, right? Coming to market thinking direct to consumer was the only thing because for me, it was the best thing ever. But fortunately, the people who started with us initially stuck with us. They gave us feedback. They told us what we were doing wrong. They told us where we could provide more education. But yeah, you know, 36% of my consumers have lost weight or managed their weight more effectively. We don't market ourselves as a weight loss tool, but you know, when you stop with spikes in glucose, the weight comes off. We have, I think, 40% of our consumers have said they sleep better now because they have better glucose stability overnight. Number one recovery tool. And then 80% of people say they fuel more during activity. And as a result, they've gone 50% say they've gone faster and broken personal records. So I don't have a magic tool. I present you with data. And then as you learn how that data works for you, it's like you have this behavior change buddy sitting on your shoulder all the time saying, well, should I do this? Actually, I know what that's going to do to my body now. I have quantitative information of the effect of a beer versus the effect of a glass of wine versus the effect of water or Coke Zero. Like we're in touch with Coca-Cola and we showed them the data of how big glucose spikes are on Coke versus you know the minimal effects of glucose for Coke Zero. It's like, let's help make the world healthier. So anyhow, I, I answer your question 47 different ways and if I need to simplify it again, you don't feel like absolutely, you know, I think it's great because these are the exact examples and I love the authenticity that you brought that, hey, you blew it, right? Out the gate, you had these big assumptions that, hey, this is going to solve everything under the sun, if you will. 
and it didn't. But that is where I think a lot of the success for tenacious entrepreneurs or founders like yourself that will take that feedback that can turn some of those big failures into huge successes. I absolutely love that you're able to share that because I think there's always those learning moments in some of our moments of failure that can only make us better. So thank you for sharing that, Phil. And in regards to the roadmap here in the United States, is that going to be any different than what you've experienced? OUS, you know, maybe lay out a little bit of the roadmap of what you're seeing here in the United States. Yeah. So, you know, we just got our contract finalized in November of 2023 for our U.S. business, which I'm super excited about. And, you know, in, in Europe, we brought continuous glucose monitoring to people without diabetes. People who before us didn't wake up thinking, what's my glucose in the morning? What's my glucose after breakfast? It was, we had to create a new language for the consumer audience out there. And, you know, we saw people who could take the glucose letters, turn them into sentences and paragraphs were the ones who, you know, won the Tour de France. They set won Olympic gold medals in Tokyo. But for a lot of people, it was confusing, right? Because they'd never seen glucose before. So one of the things I'm really excited about in the U.S. market is we're actually bringing our solution to people with diabetes, people who have been using continuous glucose monitoring for years, who understand truly the value of optimizing their glucose and will appreciate all the nuances in our digital experience in our app that will help get them there quicker. And, you know, I've had Team Nova Nordisk, an all diabetic pro cycling team, they've been using this technology for the past four years. We've had our best seasons to date. My pipeline's the strongest it's ever been. I've had healthcare professionals in Europe try our product under clinical trial and say that one week on Super Sapiens app and platform, they learned more than in five years on traditional continuous glucose monitoring platforms. And this is like doctors, very intelligent people who have embraced and had good control, have enhanced their user experience and their life experience exponentially. So I'm really excited about it. Yeah, you know, again, I think. I've learned a lot from the mistakes that we made in the early years. So, you know, we will look to work with certified diabetes educators. We will look to present our data at medical conference so that, conferences so that we can educate healthcare professionals. Because, look, there's no magic solution when it comes to good glucose control for a person with diabetes. We've seen this in the consumer data without diabetes. When it comes to metabolism, we're all snowflakes. You know, if you eat a banana and I eat a banana, we're going to see two different glucose profiles. And you look at certain drug therapies, right? And I'm glad you said that the payer audience is a big one here because the cocktail that I use to manage my diabetes is not you know, approved by insurance. I've had a drug that I've been getting out of Europe that's indicated for people type 2, but it has tremendous benefits for type 1. And you know, I have a hemoglobin A1C of 5.1% with my basal insulin, my bolus insulin, and adjunctive therapy, you know, which is unheard of for people with diabetes, but I have to continually battle my insurance company to get what I need to take care of myself. And my hope is that as we kind of collect more and more data on people with and without diabetes, we can present the payers the opportunity of presenting a continuous glucose monitor to the general public. We put this in the hands of kids. Kids are going to rapidly learn what does what to the body. They're going to make better decisions. So the more we can get this technology paid for early, you know, I think every person in the U.S. should use a CGM continuous glucose monitor at some point in their life. Once or twice a year would be phenomenal. If we can get that paid for, we will drastically reduce the healthcare cost in America. I'm 100% certain on that. But we've got to first collect the data. We've got to do the studies. We've got to do the publications. And as you, you know, being that audacious pioneer, you know that patience has to be a part of it and really taking the long view for what needs to be done to get to the big audacious goal and making sure you do the small things on a step-by-step -step approach to get there. And that's, I think, what startup life has taught me over the last five years is it's tough to solve things overnight, but you got to fight like hell to at least try. Absolutely. Every day it's a battle and there's nothing wrong with that at all, especially if you know in the fiber of your being and what you're doing is going to change lives. To me, it's actually pretty darn easy to rip yourself out of bed and get after it every single day, even when you have that 10,000th no that comes across your desk because you believe it so much because you have seen it not only with your own self, but with other end users, you have seen the results. Phil, let's take the proverbial and the virtual a crystal ball off the shelf over here. Let's sort of in front of each other. Let's look downstream a bit. Let's look three to five years from now, not only for Super Sapiens, obviously you're about to unlock a huge opportunity here stateside and congratulations on receiving that clearance to get after here in the US. But let's talk about it even more broadly, Super Sapiens globally. And then of course, just this market in general and from the expertise and, and the viewpoint that you have, 
What should we be thinking about? The, the listeners rallied around this podcast. What should we be mindful of? We should be keeping top of mind from your perspective, again, not only for your organization and maybe what's on the roadmap, but just on the macro overall, what are we seeing over the next three to five years? The thing that I've been really excited about is that in the U.S. especially, it's been sick care for so long. You know, we pay, you go to the hospital, it's not a problem, but you want to get preventative medicine, then, you know, you have to fight, fight, fight to prevent. So now I think the mindset of, I don't want to take care of myself when I'm sick, I want to prevent getting sick is more of a mentality that a good chunk of the population has, but we have to spread that to everybody. And as a entrepreneur, I wanted to grow to $500 million valuation in the first year because we're going to, but if you don't take the small steps, you're not going to get there. So I think this mindset of how do we stay healthy, how do we prevent getting sick, you know, is going to grab hold more and more. You see a metabolic health wave out there. You know, Abbott, Dexcom, you know, Medtronic have been like, it's really Abbott and Dexcom have been pioneering the CGM space. Medtronic, Sensionics are on market as well, doing a decent job. But you see these other companies like Very, January, Levels, NutriSense, who are taking this technology and trying to make metabolic health at the forefront of people's eyes. And I think it's a new market, right? And as we get this new market out there, we're going to quickly see, you, know, you see the diet, what is it, a $600 billion industry, the weight loss industry? And it fails over and over and over because people are trying to solve for the masses, right? And what you see when you put La Liga football team on continuous glucose monitor, you see that when the game starts, everyone has a different glucose response. At halftime, everyone has a different glucose response. So you need to know who you are before you decide how are you going to fuel your engine for whatever the set goal is. Because if you give the same weight loss routine to 20 people, it's going to work for a third of them, but it's going to fail for two thirds. But when you can get the real data on the individual, you can personalize the journey for people. I think you're going to see a much healthier population in the next five years. There's companies like Zwift, Strava, Peloton, you know, all these fitness communities who are really creating communities. You see people, you know, wearing a sensor on their arm. Like I have two sensors on my arm at all time. It used to be like, you're trying to quit smoking or what do you, is that a battery pack? I got made fun of for years for wearing these things. But now I'm at my kids' sporting events or at the climbing gym or anywhere. Hey, which one do you have? You know, I said Super Sapiens. Whoa, Super Sapiens, how'd you get that one? It's like, well, I, I started the company. No way. Like, I've been dying to get that. It's only available in Europe. You know, it's like, you know, but the people who have, well, I use levels, right? You know, people have a point in pride in putting this on their arm now. If you see someone with a sensor on their arm, it's because they care about being healthy. And the more those of us can care about being healthy, the more we can help our families to care about being healthy, our friends to care about being healthy. And you can see this data-driven approach of domino effect of getting America moving. And at the end of the day, that's what we have to do. We got to get America moving. We got to get kids exercising more frequently at a younger age. I'm upset. You know, my children, you know, I've got a 20-year-old, a 9-year-old, a 7-year-old, a 5-year-old. The boys in school, they have PE class every four days. That is not training their metabolic system very effectively. You know, we need physical education on a daily basis for kids because they might not be able to exercise when they get home. They might not have safe environments to do so. So I think this data-driven policy approach, data-driven personalized medicine approach, helping people with diabetes especially get the medicine that their doctor prescribes to them without their insurance companies denying it, saying we did a PBM deal with this other company, so that's the insulin you're getting. Those days have to be over because staying healthy, especially when you have diabetes, is a challenge. You don't need to fight for the medications you need to get at the same time. Well, I also love what you said at the very front end of your answer in regards to this notion of using technology like Super Sapiens or others to get to this mind frame of preventative care. Obviously, there's a lot weighing in on the policy side of the aisle as well. That's a whole nother podcast episode when we start thinking about value-based care and what the intersection there is with uh, technologies like Super Sapiens or others to create this preventative environment. You know as well as I do, if we can get further upstream with uh, you know citizens in our communities at a younger age, imagine, imagine the health that we could disseminate across our communities and not have morbid obesity with people in their teens or their 20s, everything else that may go along with that, and having actual health and wellness starting out early on and being able to live in a preventative environment. That's going to be when we truly unlock the human potential of getting healthy again as an ecosystem. So thank you for sharing that. I think it's really important to fill. We'll put the crystal ball back on the shelf for now. We'll bring it back to right now. I want to talk about how our community can be helping you and the team 
have an amazing, amazing group of leaders rallied around this podcast, love to help out our guests. What's one problem need or question that you and the team have that our community can be helping you with? Well, in the world of the entrepreneurial journey that I'm on, it seems like I've been fundraising since day one of starting the company. And right now, we've got an exciting opportunity with Republic. It's republic.com slash super sapiens crowdfunding. We're inviting our customers. We're inviting the general public to come be a part of the investment journey of super sapiens. So that campaign's live. If people want to join, that'd be a great place to get on board. And yeah, the next wave, as you said, people get rounds going on this podcast. Like I'll probably be launching my Series A campaign right when this comes out. And that's where we're going to look to you know, fund the next wave of health, longevity, success for the U.S. population and eventually the world. How to solve for it? I'd say you know, if people have questions like, how do you get someone, at the like you said at the start of the show, who says, that's not for me because I'm not an athlete. How can we collectively, your audience... You know, inspire people to believe in themselves so they're willing to make the investment necessary in themselves to be the best of them. And that's not just going to help my company. I think it's going to help with a lot of your listeners' companies and you know, anyone in the health, fitness, activity world. But that'd be a question like, how do we inspire everyone out there to believe in themselves so that they're willing to invest the time, the resource, the energy it takes to be the best of themselves? And if y'all can answer that for me and we can then answer that for society. I'd say this was the best podcast experience ever. I think I'm going to say that anyway. But <laughs> what we solve for that one, then Basta, Mike, you and I will both retire uh, with a healthier world solved for already. I love it. Well, in order to get there, we need to start to now and help you out with some of those requests, not only on the funding side, but how do we help solve for all of that and more? How does our community get a hold of you? Social media handles, websites, contact points online or otherwise. How do they get a hold of you, Phil? So our website, supersapiens.com, and to learn more about everything. And then, yeah, shoot me an email, phil at supersapiens.com. Easy enough. And for our listening community, just simply scroll on down into your favorite podcast player in the notes for this episode. There will be those contact points online and in your notes for Phil and the team. Or you can head over to our free global online community at passionatepioneers.com. There will be a post for this episode where you can leave comments, feedback, suggestions, or otherwise, and track down those contact points for Phil and the team at passionatepioneers.com for supersapiens.com. Phil, as we wind it down, we have one more piece for you before you get out of here. It's a fill in the blank. I know you're going to bring the heat to close this down. I'm a passionate pioneer because? I want to leave the world in a better place than I found it. I love it. Phil, thank you so much. I know it must be a very very exciting and very busy time as you get ready to unlock and launch in the United States. Get back to getting after building your company. Know you have a huge fan on the other end of this microphone in myself and our podcast community here at Passion of Pioneers. For now, Phil, thank you so much for taking the time to be with our community today. It was an absolute honor having this conversation with you. Thank you so much, Mike. Thrilled to be with you. Thank you for joining us today on Passionate Pioneers with Mike Baselli. We'd love to hear your feedback about the podcast so we can continue to improve this community and to further support the pioneers being featured. Lastly, please take a moment to subscribe to the podcast and invite your friends and colleagues to join us. This is Passionate Pioneers with Mike Baselli. I look forward to having you back with us during our next episode.